pretty awesome, huh? Really just pleased for the club and all its members and all the work that everybody's done. It's not just the players on the floor, but right through the whole front office staff and everybody connected, sponsors. It's In the end, it's a collective and it's where every team inspires to be at the start of pre-season. And we're fortunate enough to have that opportunity. It seems like this season has gone, I know you had that little dip in the middle of the season, but it just seems like it's been, it seems really been executed perfectly to this point to, to get us in the right space to have a real crack at this now. Yeah, I felt like we were maybe about six games out, I think it might have been. We just found this nice rhythm offensively and I think we were still growing defensively and that probably showed the other night where everything come together against a very potent offensive team, but it's probably been growing at another level about six weeks out from the from the playoffs and you know it's, sometimes it's really difficult to find that synergy but I, I think Mag's coming back in and playing his best basketball of his probably of his career and in a good headspace um, probably left us in a good spot. Yeah I believe you're available for the last game but went with Magna in the starting time and I think an enormous competitive what was the sort of thinking there in terms of switching it up? Yeah I think it was just rhythm. You know, Mag is in a good rhythm, he's in good form, Marcus is, is playing good basketball at the right time of the year, which, you know, we need him at, our, uh, at his best for us to be successful. Um, so nothing major, just just a continuum of the game before. And you'll go with that again in game one? Uh, I'm not sure yet, we haven't discussed that. Taking a chance, Mark, to reflect on maybe post-game the other night, about how long it's taken Uh, not really, I probably didn't look at it like that. Um, probably just happy to get a win in Perth. Well, it's very difficult. <laughs> not many teams have done it, and we've been fortunate enough to get that win and um, put us in a, just put us in a good headspace coming out of that game. And Melbourne United are a different beast. They play a different brand of basketball, probably a little bit more similar to us. So it's like playing ourselves a little bit, you know, and obviously we've played Melbourne you know, in a finals, semi-final series in the past. So there's some good recent history of good games to, to call upon. How much belief do you take out of that game two when you obviously you didn't start the game well, but the second half was really good? It felt like from the word go on Wednesday night, you first went out with a really intent to start the game really well. Yeah, I, I think we intend to start them well all the time. And, you know, sometimes you make some shots and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's schemes that might not quite be on point, but I just feel like we're in a good rhythm. We, well, both teams should be feeling good during the grand final, so the belief for both teams should be high. Can you compare and contrast going into this grand final series compared to year one? It felt back in year one that you were the plucky underdog, you skated through, had some good fortune, but this year it feels different. Like you, you know, when you might even be favourites coming in, you're certainly the team to beat on four. Yeah, it probably feels a little bit different, obviously. Like the first year was almost like you're in a fairy tale, to be honest. Um, it seems such a long time ago now, so I can't really remember it. Maybe other than the Melbourne series, that to actually get there and the Josh Adams shot becomes a little bit famous in the context of our history. Uh, but the other night, there was a level of calmness about our group, so it wasn't like we were surprised that we won. You know, we expect to win, and we're in a good headspace. We're confident, um, but we're a very level-headed group. Jack's had an amazing year, hasn't he? Tweaked another 27 points on Perth. Basketball and higher honours and whatnot. Just, just to watch his development this year must have been an amazing thing, and just you know, know the impact that he's going to have in the grand final series. A big deal for your club. Yeah, Jack McVay's, he, like He's a special player. He's he doesn't keep amazing, but he just keeps doing different things. Well, I haven't seen that before. And but when you actually see him at practice, he's he's doing different things every day, and he's always working on his craft. And um, he's a special player. He's very very connected to the group and has great leadership skills. He's part of our leadership team. Um, so, like, the other night doesn't surprise us. You know, it might surprise some people, but Jack McVay doesn't surprise us, you know, ever. Who's the scouts Melbourne United, Brad? Have you had a good chance to look at them in the other night yet, or has it been such a quick turnaround you haven't had a real good look yet? Yeah, no, it's, it's my scout, but, I mean, all the scouts we do collectively, there's... Um, Coach Roth puts a lot of time into it, obviously, because he's more on the defensive side of it from that standpoint. Has elite game planning. Like that's something that's probably su not surprised me, but he's with his experience. But Scott's game planning defensively is like elite level, um, which it should be. He was in the NBA for a long time, but um, transferring that into international basketball, like we've learned so much from from that space and. 
but it's a collective. We're, we're all in on it. We've only got one team, so that everybody can put time into them. How big is the next 48 hours in terms of a big emotional high, the long day travelling yesterday? How big is the next 48 hours to just get ready to, and not get jumped on on Saturday, uh, Sunday? Yeah, I think both teams finish at the same time. Obviously, we had a, little, a trip back from Perth, but travel, who cares at this time of the year? Like, we're ready to go back to Melbourne, play in a very familiar place. You know, you play a lot of games at, at um, John Kane Arena. We played South East Melbourne there, we played finals there, we played Melbourne United there. So we, there isn't another venue other than my state that we play more games in. So it's a familiar environment. Guys had a very relaxing day today. It was their choice of um, three options to what they wanted to do at practice um, on where they're at with their bodies and their preparation. Um, so I, I think we'll be in great space. Well, touched on it there a little bit. Um, John Keane is a pretty good record there for the Jack Jumpers. What's that about that court that, that makes you feel comfortable going there? Well, particular? well, we've won, so that obviously gives you confidence. But I think part of it is if you don't bring it when you go to John Kane Arena against either of those two teams, and of late, especially Melbourne United, you're going to get your butt handed to you. So there's, there's that. That, that'll jolt you into gear and make sure that you're ready when you head in there. Often talk about next man up mentality. Um, obviously, I know it's two games ago now, but for Majuk Jang to step up away during that game, so it must give you a lot of confidence to know that if you need him to step up in the, in the final series, he's there ready to go. Yeah, no question. He was he was big for us, wasn't he, in that little cameo performance? But he was he was doing that before he got injured too. There was just different teams suit different guys, and um, I think Scott has said that next man up regularly, and it was Juk. And, you know, Fab. Fab has been a proven finals performer in past years, and it, this might be his series, who knows? And that's why everybody's got to be ready to go. And Majuk was on that night. Clean bill of health, everyone's fit and firing, ready to roll. No yeah, I think, I think we're good. Yeah.